All right, Miss Mc 1115, we are going to get started. Everybody, I'd like to welcome you to a chat about human capital management. My name is Lisa Turk. I'm a business consultant with Paymaster Payroll Services, and I am joined by Nikki Cooper, our HRIS specialist. A um, few housekeeping items before we get started. Nikki, if you could show that, there we go. Um, I believe we have everyone muted, but if everyone could stay muted during this session, it'll help mitigate some of the background noise. Um, as we kind of had a chat at the, at the top of the session, we want this to be interactive and fun. So please um, use your chat questions. I will be keeping that and feeding the questions so that we can get all your answers, questions answered. If for some reason you have um, an issue and you get kicked out of the room, just go back to the lobby and the lobby attendants will switch you back into this room in progress. So home screen and lobby is always your, um, your option. If you have a bigger issue, there is a life preserver at the top left of your screen. Just click that for some help as well. As a reminder, this is being recorded. And not sure if you knew from your other sessions, but if you take, um, you can toggle your chat so that it's a side screen instead of a chat box, will it will um, unhide some of the presentation. And again, as this slide says, let's chat. We want to hear your questions. We know everybody's um, microphones are muted and we want to make sure everyone's questions get answered. So with that, I am going to introduce my good friend and associate, Maniki Cooper, to have um, to lead us in this discussion about human capital management. Maniki, take it away. Good morning, everybody. I'm so glad you all could make it. And uh, we're going to have a great time talking about HR. Um, I'm going to start with this picture of this lady, this HR admin that has her hands going in all different directions. She has several things to do, many tasks to complete. She reminds me of myself about five years ago. I was wearing many hats while trying to stay organized and compliant. A lot has changed uh, since then. The... Um, I'm sorry, a lot has changed since then. Um, you know, COVID-19 has really changed our HR lives tremendously, but the one thing that has not changed is the amount of work that an HR admin has to do. So again, with COVID-19, many companies have had to reinvent many processes um, for this new normal for us. We have new policies and procedures. We even have to update our handbooks. So we're going to talk about the employee life cycle and some of the challenges you all are facing today with COVID-19. I wonder how that old onboarding process is working for you. That process where you, you're receiving emails of blurry pictures, Ill illegible documents, not to mention sending sensitive information back and forth through the email over the internet. Um, are you having employees print applications and fill them out um, as well as their I-9s and withholding forms and then email those back to you with a social and ID? Wrong. Terribly, terribly wrong. Reason being, it's a whole, a lot of waste of time. Um, I used to, well, basically I had an, an issue with documents being sent over where um, employees takes pictures of the document and try to email it to you. It comes out blurry. You do the best you can do to enter in a direct deposit. So so you enter the direct deposit and Friday comes and the employee says, oh, my check is not in my bank account. Now you got to go back, pick up the doc, go back to the document, you know, try to find out what happened. Waste of time. Um, what I did do at that time to stop. So what I did do at that time to stop um, employees from 
giving me illegible documents, especially the direct deposit, was I asked them to send me a voided check. So that did resolve that issue. And that's what HR admins do. We resolve issues so that we can handle other tasks that we have to do. Um, wouldn't you rather enter your personal information into a secure cloud-based system rather than sending it over the email? Um, where are you guys storing all of this paperwork, your personal um, employees' files? Our system uh, allows for about two gigs of storage per company, and we haven't had one company come close to reaching that maximum. Uh, the security level that we have is as good as your banking, uh, online banking, and has a two-factor two-factor authentication. <laughs> um, but we're going to uh, start by talking about how we can make our lives easier and stress-free, and get rid of all of this paper and filing that we have to do. Ele electronic withholding forms are able to be completed online in the employee's account and it'll actually pull over the employee's personal information so that the employee only has to basically sign the uh, forms. Checklist, we have employee handbooks that can also be acknowledged electronically and custom forms. Like I said, the custom forms um, sometimes have several fields, uh, including address, phone numbers, and any information that is required for a form that is on the employee's profile, we can add that field and automatically populate that information into any of your custom forms. Checklist. Uh, I absolutely love checklist. I used to use checklist for everything because if I didn't have a checklist, something could easily get slipped through the cracks. Um, it helped me to keep things in order, help things to stay consistent because the more you do it, the less errors. Um, and it made sure that I was compliant in a lot of areas. Without that checklist, many things could slip through the cracks. Um, we uh, Back to our custom forms, uh, back in the day, we used to use Adobe Sign. Adobe Sign still caused us to have to print that document, file it somewhere. Well, custom forms are stored in the system. Like I said, the employee would just have to go and click to sign. And that document would be stored on that employee's file. It wouldn't have to go into a file cabinet. Uh, how are you guys requesting information from your managers or your employees? Uh, the system has an HR action that would, um, these are HR actions, by the way, my employee action request and uh, my information action request. So the employee action request is generally sent to managers and administrators to handle scenarios such as uh, promotions, salaries, uh, changes, hiring, and terminations. The my information action request is an uh, typically sent to your employees when their information needs to be updated. So uh, we have a couple questions for you guys. I would like to know, how are you making sure that all your tasks are completed these days? And how are you receiving information from your employees? I mean, Nikki, we also have a question about our checklist expiration dates automatically generated. Do, I should say checklist. do reminders for checklist. Okay, um, checklist, um, first of all, when you create a checklist, you are going to create a checklist with every item that you would like your employee to complete. A checklist can be a new hire checklist or it could be um, just a new policy that was created and you would send that, create the checklist, assign it to your employees. The employees would receive a notification to go log in and to complete the checklist. If the employee doesn't complete the checklist in the amount of days that you set for them to uh, complete it, then a reminder will be sent to the employee. And basically, they will receive that reminder, I believe, every day until they complete that checklist. 
Fantastic. So you can set you can set the date that your checklist is due and the reminder will be sent after that due date. Are they limited on the number of checklists they can have? Absolutely not. You could create several checklists. Whenever you need a checklist or anything to go out to your employees, you can just log in the system, create it, send it out to your employees in about, you know, five minutes. However, I used to um, have, for instance, our benefit enrollment. That's what we were about to talk about. Uh, forms. And I had employees in Alabama. I had employees in Palm Beach County and I had employees in Brevard County. Well, these um, documents need to be signed by the employee. So we would have to actually deliver documents to each store location. There were 34 of them, 24 here, eight in Alabama, and about 14 or something odd in uh, Brevard County. Mind you, in the transition, all things get lost. I never received it. We don't have to do with, deal with that with our system. Um, with electronic on uh, electronic benefit enrollment, everything's stored in the system. And I have a question. I would like to ask how many of you out there are using online enrollment? And Nikki, we have a question about if, will the reminders only be sent via email? Yes, that is correct. The um, reminders will be sent by email. Peggy would like to know how many of you guys. Go ahead, Lisa. Would um, there's a question of whether if text option for reminders. There actually is a text option that was uh, came out this year, um, actually just recently. So there is a text option to send out reminders and notifications. Excellent. So how many of you are using online um, enrollment? And what systems are you using to complete the enrollment? I know some of the clients are using Employee Navigator. Also have a question and we were wondering how you guys transferring your information to your carriers. Uh, with the system, uh, most carriers have their spirit sheets already set up with the information they like to collect. With the system, you're able to go in the benefit enrollment um, plans that your employees selected and add every column from your carrier's spreadsheet directly to the system, export it out and email it so that you don't even have to fill the spreadsheet. It would already be filled with all the information, including your dependents uh, and all of their personal information that needs to be transferred. The employees would select their benefits during open enrollment at a qualifying event or even as a new hire. With online benefit enrollment, you increase your accuracy and your record keeping and you kick out that file cabinet. <laughs> now this is how your employees will have 24 seven access to their benefits and more. So your employees um, with the HCM to go app are able to um, complete the employee self service. Employee self service is um, the employees able to update their personal information such as their address their emergency contacts are their contact information. They're able to request time off and that time off in turn would be immediately sent a notification to that employee's manager to approve that time off. All of this can be done directly in the app. The time off could be approved and requested. In the app, the employees are able to uh, see their time off accruals, their balances, they're able to view their schedules and timesheets um, and any company information that you um, 
allow for your employees to be to um, access would be listed in your company documents so that it's easy, uh, accessible, and downloadable for your employees. Great. Do we have any questions on the Employee Self um, Service Center? We have a very smart crowd. They get it, Maniki. Awesome. HCM to go. So in the with the app, you're able to create different dashboards as well as in HC, uh, your systems. You can create different dashboards for your employees, for your managers, your supervisors, and admins. Each one of them would you would only, you know, give them the information that you are um, allowing them to access. So that's totally customizable. And they're able to clock in from the app. If you notice that an admin could also or a manager could view recruitment on the app to see how many applicants they had. Um, employees can view their pay statements and their history. They're also, like I said earlier, can retain request their time off and vacation, uh, be able to view their timesheets, and that awesome benefit enrollment can be completed at any time. So you don't have to set up this great, you know, meeting, or sometimes we did that. You set up a meeting for everybody to come in and complete their, own, their benefit enrollment, where it's wasting time because um, they could be working and complete benefit enrollment on the weekend with this app. All right, so we're gonna talk about asset management. You know, um, especially during this time with COVID-19, employees are home. I have a couple of computers here, a telephone, and your companies need to keep track of your assets because they are expenses. So in the system will allow you to keep track of your vehicles, your uh, computers, your keys, credit cards, or uh, any type of um, asset that you've uh, assigned to the employee. It's very uh, detailed where you can even put in the model numbers and the uh, serial numbers to these items. You're also able to add the cost of the item. And the reason why it's so important to keep track of your assets is that any all of these items must be returned upon termination. So if you have your key log over here in this file cabinet and you have your vehicle log over here, it's very easy to forget to collect this information from your employees when in the system you'll see everything assigned to the employee at a glance in one snapshot. Uh, your credential, we have credential management as well with expiration tracking, where you could track your licenses and certifications that your employees uh, are need to get to perform the jobs that they are in. So if that employee certification or license slips through the cracks and expires, then what do you do? You have a liability there because you have a person working without the credentials that he's supposed to have. So in the system, you're able to assign the credentials to the employee and you will receive a notification upon expiration or approaching ex expiration. You could uh, set your notifications to come to you 60, 30, 90 days seven days. You can set the, these up to do anything. Um, once that credential has expired and it needs to be updated, there's our employee self-service again. You're able to create an action to send um, a notification to the employee, let them know to upload their new credentials. And that way you as the admin do, do not have to um, have someone come into your office to give you that information right now. Um, your employees could just fill that information out and you would enter it into the system. 
employee track um, education tracking as well. We, you can track your employees' education levels and degrees. There's also an incident tracking um, where you can track incidents, violations, and their resolutions. Um, it's also integrated with the OSHA 300 forms. I think there's about three of them. Um, other incidents could be verbal warnings, final warnings, or an internal incident that you only want viewed by the HR admin and the manager. And there was a question about sending reminders for those credentials um, about custom reminders to the employees 30, 60, 90 days before expiration. That is fully customizable, correct, Maniki? That is correct. And yes, um, to answer one of the questions out there, Brenda, yes, asset, asset assignment is included in the HR module. If you have the HR module already, then you'll have the asset management. There's a re uh, question regarding creating reports for the assets, Maniki. Yeah, perfect. Um, so just like you guys' employee information screen, the asset report would be the same. Um, it'll be located under your team tab and you go to HR and then your assets. Once you pull up the report, you're able to see all the assets as well as any um, cost. You can add all the columns. You can add the columns of the description, the cost, um, and any other information that you want added to your assets. I wish I had a nice picture to show you of all the information that we could collect on one asset. Your CFO is going to love this for depreciation reports. <laughs> all right, moving right along to performance reviews. Our performance reviews are totally customizable because, number one, you'll have a totally different performance review for your admins, your exempt employees, and your non-exempt employees. So you're able to enter these, pro all, all three profiles or more, if you had more, to um, specifically gear towards that employee. Um, performance in reviews include um, your competencies, your core values, your goals, and your ratings. It's very, very, very important that your performance reviews are being completed in a timely manner and doing it electronically saves on paper. Because I know our performance reviews were about five pages and we had about 650 employees. So if you are doing performance reviews on an annual basis for 650 employees, I think that's probably about a case of paper. <laughs> it has to be circulated to the manager and to the employee and all the way back to HR. Well, by the time it came back to me, half of them had coffee stains and were missing pages. It was just crazy. Uh, but anyway, back to this. Um, reviews help you to identify when your employees are in need of training, when your employees are doing quite well and need a raise. Um, but they are very, very okay. helpful. And one thing um, is why it's so important to do them in a timely manner and do them consistently is because if you lack or fail to give someone a performance review and, you know, they've asked about it or another employee happened to have theirs and they didn't, that's going to bring down morale. It's going to, it could also be a liability. It could really cause an uproar. So you want to make sure that you're doing your performance reviews on a consistent and timely manner. And yes, the performance reviews can be uh, linked back with your checklist. So your employees will be notified to complete their self-review and then you'll be notified to complete their review as well. Good question. The template, every, every, all the managers using the same template so that there's um, compliance and conformity 
all along the same um, job positions. Everybody loves those templates. All right. I see um, a question regarding email. To, do we work with? Do we work with? Yes. Absolutely. I am available to work with you to teach you how to create yeah. your custom forms. And um, once you create a form, um, you'll be a pro at it. It's so simple. You're just adding the field and telling the field where to pull the information from, whether the information is either going to be typed in or it's going to be auto populated from the employee's profile. Great question. And All right, email. Matt. We got to set up your performance reviews. I was talking to Matt. Matt says they're doing their person performance reviews via email. Um, with the system, um, we set up a workflow to complete the performance review where it would go to the manager and or to the employee first, to the manager, then back to the employee for signature. The workflow sets it all up. There's a uh, you're able to see the workflow and the progress of the workflow. You can tell if the managers completed his part or the employees completed their parts. Um, I think the system would really, really put all this information all in one place again at a snapshot so you can see it at one time. These templates so, are also across managers so that you can get other managers input, just so you know. That is correct. Customizable, it really is. So, reviews help you identify when an employee is in need of training. So, directly from your Paymaster system, you are able to access 300 design courses to engage and educate your entire staff. Now, this is in addition, in addition to what you probably have already. Um, However, it would be able to be accessed directly from your Paymaster module. And it has several um, 300 courses on the following topics, harassment, compliance and legal, environment and climate, work safety, human resources, computer and IT, customer service, professional development, and the newest one is the pandemic response. Um, just this year, um, this California, Connecticut, Delaware, New York, New York City, I think a couple other places, Illinois and Maine, they all passed statutes where their employees had to take or requiring their employees to take sexual harassment training. So when a I'm state makes a statue as such, wouldn't it be just great to be able to just log into your Paymaster system and assign those courses to your employees all at once? And now you're able to track it. You're able to track their tracks. Even if you had to assign more than one course for more than one different of the topics, you're able to set those tracks up to um, be completed at a certain time. So you're able to set the completion date that they should complete them by. Um, you're able to also just view this information in report form as well. Maniki, would so, you have... Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so yes, the HR module, much like the, you know, the, uh, the time labor management or the simple payroll module, it is an additional cost. So if you do have the HR module now, we can help you set up with the templates, um, all the functionality of it. But the HR module is in addition to um, the straight pay payroll module. Correct. Mm -hmm. HR going back to and the, the, oh, go ahead. the learning. Sorry. For, um, for those that offer tuition assistance, I will tell you that if you are, um, this will work with outside trainings as well. So if you are requiring um, your staff or you provide tuition assistance for your staff, you can put their coursework that they're currently working on in there and work in conjunction with the payroll module for reimbursement once that their um, coursework has been completed or will match it with your tuition assistance policy. 
Perfect. Now, HR support on demand is another uh, part of the system. This is your personal HR assistant. Uh, just to name a few of the resources that are available through HR demand, uh, you can look up any of topics um, under that topics tab. You can look up benefits, diversity and discrimination. You can look up health care reform and more. Under the laws tab, you would have your state and federal laws at a glance because when you set yourself up you're going to enter the state that you are are working in as well as the number of employees so when you enter this information once you sign up for hr support all of that information that's there for you is geared towards your company size and the state that your company is in uh, the learning, this is where you would access your employee training. There's also articles in there, uh, very informative articles about employees and employee training. Um, the tools tab, you'll have your employee handbook, uh, job description library, and a, a policy library. In 2020, there were over 200 new labor laws and just to put it out there, if you have not reviewed your handbook, then it's probably most likely definitely outdated. So this would be a great place to go in and update your handbook or create a custom handbook, or you could ask a pro. Um, under the documents tab, they have little checklists there as well to help you complete any tasks. So if you don't actually have a checklist, you could download a checklist for a different task and you could tweak it to your company, so to speak. But uh, most of them come in word form and you can just change it around. Uh, there's forms, there's guides and there's t letters that are templates for your employees. Uh, HR demand also has a where you can ask the pros you can ask a hr uh sherm certified professional any of your hr questions whether it's on sexual harassment or whether it has to do with covid 19. uh the hr support system actually has a dedicated covid 19 resource center and in that covid 19 resource center uh you have COVID-19 templates or letter templates that you can send out to your employees. Um, this, this service also uh, sends you out emails. Um, I don't know the frequency right now, but I just uh, recently read one and they were talking about um, what if your employee says that they cannot come into work because their child is were doing online school and their child, they did have an age on that one was about, I don't know, a teenager or something. But in the news, in the little email or newsletter or however you want to call it, it gives you a solution for that. It tells you how to handle it. So periodically, you could also get your questions already answered in some of the emails that they send you. Um, the COVID-19 Resource Center, is um, a very great place. I've been getting a lot of COVID-19 questions. And with things changing on a day-by-day -day -day ba basis, this HR support will keep you up to date and keep you in compliance and basically advise you on some things that you may not have known what to do at that time. Do we have any questions about... HR support. Maniki, we have a question is if somebody is available um, via the telephone, if they want to speak with somebody. Yes, there's also um, a phone number uh, in the system where you could call them as well. And I did put in the chat, just so you were aware, um, regarding, we did mention the, the six states that require the um, sexual harassment training, that new email, mm -hmm. emails will be regarding um, new legislation in your state, should it arise. Correct. Mm -hmm. 
there's um all right and it, I wanted to find out if anybody had any more questions on the HR support and on demand. All right, we're going to talk about applicant tracking and recruitment. Uh, you can track your applicant activity in the system, create and post job requisitions, schedule interviews, and run different reports in relation to job application or job requisitions and applicants. Wouldn't you rather have a place where you could find all, and view all of your applicant notes on one screen in one report form instead of flipping through tons of resumes looking for your notes? Um, I oh my gosh. Aside from that, posting in this job board, that job board, Craigslist, the one over here, you can actually uh, post your job requisitions directly to Indeed. As soon as you create the job requisition and you post it, it'll post to Indeed within 24 to 48 hours. We also have links where you can uh, add to your own company website. Uh, for your employees to apply, and they would be directed right into the Paymaster applicant tracking system. Uh, you could also place that link in any of the job boards, and your employees would, or your potential hires would click the apply button. They would create an account. Um, once they create the account, they would upload their resume and that information would directly um, be extracted and put into the system. Uh, your applicants would be in one list so that you could uh, choose your applicants. You would also be able to see their hiring stages, whether that applicant is not a good fit, whether the applicant is in the screening stage, whether this person is scheduled for an interview, you would be able to see all of that information on one report. Um, you are also able to create job app, uh, applicant checklists. So if you had any information that you needed to collect from the applicant, you could do that in the process prior uh, to the hiring process. Um, we have fields for the referrals for the applicant. Um, you're able to put your applicants in separate groups and make those separate groups viewable for different um, hiring managers. There's communication templates so that you're not creating uh, an email every single time that you wanna communicate with a potential hire. Uh, so the templates are there. You could create your offer letter. You could create your uh, request for an interview. And you could also create your request for um, the first initial screening. We have a question. Yes, the details can be shared um, among managers. Often these decisions are made um, as a group decision. So yes, your checklist or your um, applicant pool list can be shared. Yes, it can. Um, you could um, make your job basically by the job requisition. Um, any applicants that apply for a certain job, you could uh, add the the managers that are able to view that specific requisition and its applicants. Um, there is a question. Yes, there is a login created by your applicant, um, and they can they can then um, are um, able to apply for many different jobs within your company with that logon. Good question. That is that is correct. That is a good question. Um, also, when it comes to your applicants, so now you've gone through your interviews, everything's all set and you're ready to hire this employee. Well, you'll go ahead and you click the hire button and that employee is automatically sent to your employee information screen where you can put that information in and automatically sign them, assign them their new hire checklist. So there's no more, that information just transfers right over. You don't have to enter it in twice. It's a seamless life cycle, it sounds like, Monique. Yes, just like this. A suite built for today's workforce. <laughs> you have your HR, um, HR services there. Most 
Um, I know you guys, as HR admins, we all have our own little way we do things. The best thing about this system is very customizable. So if you have a certain order of things now, you don't really have to deviate from it, but let's figure out a way to get that system set up electronically where that's less paper on your desk, no file cabinets. <laughs> I can't stress that enough because being in a position that I was in, I would come into work daily and there, you know, Throughout my day, it, my desk will get full with all types of different things. You will have the um, accounts payable over here, job applications. You got, you don't have your um, benefit enrollment. And then I had this huge book that I had to track my new hires. So it had, you know, January, February, March, and you know, you have to do every 90 days. That was my ACA reporting. Well, if you didn't know, we also have that in the system as well, ACA reporting, because, oh, that was that was amazing. I don't know if any of you have ever had to create your own 1095C form. Your 1095, uh, 1095A forms, which I created in Excel. And for those 650 employees, I did a mail merge. That is why I absolutely love working with Paymaster HR system because it's my passion to help you guys become stress-free and make all your processes seamless. So imagine the possibilities with all that extra time on your hands. Just picture yourself enjoying things outside, but stay six feet away. <laughs> so we just want that will be the end of our session today. And if you have any final questions, um, we would like you to pop them in the chat now. And we've just also a reminder for everyone to please complete the survey that I've posted in the chat. Do we have any questions regarding what we've discussed? Oh, here's some that we we did have some questions about contacting. So here's the phone number. You can go to our website um, and send us a chat, most likely. Um, but if you also know who your account rep is, you can contact them as well. 